We're wearing the same top. We look we look exactly the same. We're very twins <laughs> right now. Oh my god. Okay guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another mukbang. Today I have Tasha. I'm so excited that we're doing this. Me too. Very spontaneous. Very spontaneous. We literally planned this yesterday. So um, you're only in town for like another day or two, I think so. potentially. Yeah. We don't know. I so. <laughs> so I picked rubies, right? One of my go-tos in New York. I've already been there yesterday, today. I had them cater my event the other day. So you she know what? Rubies. rubies needs to sponsor me. <laughs> Maybe we can get rubies to sponsor uh, the next month. Right. We do. One of the best. I Their avocado say. toast is also like so good. Wait, what did you have this morning? I just went for coffee this morning. Oh, okay. We both actually got the same salad, so. Already so much in common. I, I know. Okay, so I always get the shrimp avocado salad. I don't know why. It's really simple. It's just really good. It's so good. The shrimp is really good. And I always get a side. It's going to be the crispy Brussels sprouts or the sweet potato fries or some avocado toast. Because like, I like to mix and match some things. Today we got sweet potato. You guys already know. I love sweet potato. Me too. Potato. And it's so funny because I would never order a bowl of fries. I just wouldn't. When it comes to sweet potato fries, I'm like, oh yeah, I really need yeah, those. Yeah, but it's also different. It's like, it is different. It it's like you're different. having fries, but you're you're it's you're still being healthy. healthy it's not, not healthy, but it <laughs> really, but I pretend it is. Yeah. Plus, the salad is so healthy that I feel like the fries, oops, balance it a little. This is the best salad. I'm not a huge shrimp eater. No, me either. But to be honest, I will eat this shrimp. Yeah. So that says a lot. Mmm. Yeah, it's so good. Mm hmm Okay. So if you want to give everybody like a quick rundown of your modeling journey yep. how you ended up in New York I got scouted in Spain which is where I'm from I was born and raised in Spain mom's Norwegian dad's Dutch another connection that we have uh-huh <laughs> um so I it was summer holidays I was back home from I went to university in Manchester in England so I went home for a summer I was 18 19 I got scouted I moved to London or I went to London to check out the agency so elite london scouted me i went there was gonna go back to university i just went to check it out and see what mm -hmm. they were gonna talk to me about basically and i ended up not continuing my flight to manchester and i just stayed in london through into fashion week and deferred my university and never went wow. back every year i kept deferring me like i'll just try it for another year yeah let's see how it goes yeah i'll try it for another year and all of a sudden 10 years later i'm still here so Wow. I did not go back to Manchester University, so started in London, kind of traveled everywhere, lived out of my suitcase for about six years, got a place in London, my first apartment to myself, and ended up coming to New York for a job, and then being like, oh my god, I love New York, yep. so then I ended up moving to That's New York. That's how it happens. Quickly moving out of my apartment in London, I didn't, my ex-boyfriend at the time moved my stuff out for me with my sister, oh my god. a whole thing as usual. Thank God I have the best friends and family who always can have my back yeah. and help me out because I'm always kind of everywhere and needed help. So moved to New York and now I'm sort of between New York and LA but I've been based in New York for like five years ish. Yeah. We're both kind of at the same mark. Right. You're, you're like about to six hit six years? years? Yeah, six. I just hit six years yeah, last I'm week. Yeah, I'm not sure of the exact time but something like that. So now I'm between New York and LA. Yeah, still full-time modeling. I, about five years ago, decided to do an online course in nutrition. So I did the IIN nutrition school course. Cool. Um, and then it took, honestly, about five years for me to figure out what I wanted to do aside from modeling, which I thought after my course I wanted to be a health coach. So I was coaching right. girls, I was really into nutrition, I had a food blog, That's the model such a big feed. thing in, in the industry too, right? It's like food and nutrition and right. exercise and everything. To, we're always trying to find ways to take care of ourselves and feel good and look good so yeah. nutrition is obviously super important and I was always reading books and you know online you can get everything on Google and I just decided you know what I'm gonna do a course because that way I've got something I've got a sort of a certificate I can coach people do something on the side and then I realized it wasn't for me I was kind of pushing it I had a food blog and I would go in waves of like posting and being really into it right. and then I would just give up for a couple months I'd be like oh guys I'm back I'm really into it again yeah it had this constant cycle and then this year I decided to do Pilates certification because again I'm really into working out and Pilates is something that always kind of 
no matter what I would do, boxing, personal trainers, everything, I would go back to Pilates as like my main thing that I was always really into and I love the idea of how it's a rehab movement, how it helps everyone feel better. Yeah. Um, makes you longer, makes you more flexible, makes you really strong. Like the moves don't look hard, but it they're hard. It is crazy. So I got my Pilates certification and I finished in March and then I recorded two videos just to see how I liked it and all of a sudden something clicked. And then we went into lockdown and then I just started banging out a wow. bunch of videos and it just became something that felt so good and natural to me in a weird way that I was like, wait a second this is what I've been wanting to do yeah. and now things are just kind of falling into place yeah but it took five years like I got my my nutrition thing five years ago so it wasn't just it's like so refreshing to hear it's and not I think just like you do it once and it just happens and like you no. know what you want to do I thought I wanted to do something in nutrition and then all of a sudden it's all linked I'm still you know using those principles that I learned in the course totally. with my Pilates and with the way I am with my lifestyle but it did not click until this year and I never thought I wanted to be instructor. That was never on my list and I just did the course because I wanted to learn more and see how I liked it. I mm -hmm. love teaching and helping and it just clicked. You're did, working on yeah. this whole other... It's a whole new yeah, thing and I project. love it. Yeah. So... I think that's such a important thing for people to know and understand. Um, especially like in our industry or even like in entertainment. Mm -hmm. People think that they just wake up and they know one day or they wake up and like sh shit happens, you know, and it's... It's just not the case. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time it takes like a lot of trial and error mm -hmm. and like really just listening to your gut and following what feels mm -hmm. right and not forcing it. Yeah. I think that's such a good point for yeah. sure. And it's funny because I also feel like now it's helped my modeling. Yeah. Because all of a sudden I'm shooting so much fitness stuff. Right. And Which is I good content to, for you too, And right? it's great content yeah. for me because then I get images for my yeah. thumbnails and for my own stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's so funny because I used to do every now and then fitness stuff, but not that much. And everyone would be like, oh, you must do a lot of fitness and swim. I was like, you'd be surprised. I mainly do a lot of dresses and like People say the same to me. So strange. You don't. Yeah. And then after, I guess because clients now look at your Instagram as a portfolio more than anything. And that shows my personality and what I do. And that happens to be a lot of fitness stuff. Yeah. So all of a sudden I'm shooting all these new fitness clients. Which, I guess, works yeah. in my favor. So, it kind of comes hand in hand, you know? Yeah. One thing helps the other. And I think these days, even with modeling, a lot of clients look for, what do they do? They're always like, so what hobbies do you yeah. have? What like, do you have on the side? What do you do on the side? What do you do yeah. on the time off? What and makes always, you different? <laughs> right, so I always used to be like, well, I'm a health coach and I have a food blog and like, yeah. Now it's like, I actually can really dive into like what I do on the side and yeah. it really is part of what I, my whole brand and so it does help, yeah. I guess these days you need something a little extra. What do you think it was that was the difference between, you know, your your blog and like nutrition mm -hmm. versus having that click? Like I was it something I that changed for yourself? No? I wish I could explain it. It could be also the way I changed. We also went into lockdown and I was like, it was the right moment for me. Right. If I'm still busy doing castings, traveling, shooting, I wouldn't have put all the time in. Now that I use that time where we had, you know, a lot of time at home, I used it to focus on creating constantly videos. I've now shot 70 videos. Yeah, it's a so lot of content. So it's a lot. So two videos a week. Um, and now that I'm going slowly back to traveling and working, I have them all backed up and saved. So anytime I'm home, I'm like, I've got to shoot five. So if I'm gone for a month, I still have that content ready to go. Yeah. So now I kind of have my routine and know what I'm doing a little more. So even if I go back to working and everything else, I'm still going to create that time and space to do this. Yeah. Whereas if I would have jumped into it during a work week, I wouldn't have maybe put in as much effort. Right. If that makes sense. Or had time to even right. figure out what goes into it. Because I mm -hmm. think a lot of YouTube or any other platform, and we'll, we'll get into yeah. more of like move with Tash yeah. in a sec, but I think a lot of it is actually figuring out what the best way is to execute it. Mm -hmm. It's not doing it, but it's like figuring out what the scheduling is like, what you need to do yep. outside of actually creating the content. Yeah. So, yeah, lockdown was probably a good time for that. Mm -hmm. It worked out for me. Yeah. You know, obviously it's been such an unfortunate situation and yeah, it, it's just been terrible, but so much good has come out of it and I think it's allowed a lot of us to look inward and be like, okay, what do I really want? Yeah. Like, what really makes me happy, you know? Completely. So, I think a lot of people discovered a lot about themselves. Yeah. So right now, I do two videos a week, Mondays and Fridays. 
and aside from that I do a lot of other stuff food related beauty related travel related um but my main focus is Pilates based workouts and I try and make each one unique and different yeah they range from five minutes to an hour body part specific um equipment specific so there's something for everyone no matter how much time you have how much space you have how much equipment you have there's a video that anyone can do I did a video the other day in my hotel room which was tiny like this even mm -hmm. smaller oh my god and there was like rugs on the floor so I'm like ooh, I'm not laying down there's not even any so I was like I'm gonna do a standing series which is like small amount of space no mat no nothing just you standing and doing exercises I'm so I need to try that because my mm -hmm. apartment is really small and so there I don't want to be on the floor <laughs> I think there is ways what I really believe is like I used to be someone who worked out every day an hour an hour and a half cardio classes back-to-back -back stuff and I thought the more I do the better then I got to that place with Pilates and I guess with the lockdown and stuff that I just slowed everything down yeah. and now I really just walk move my body when I feel like it if I don't feel like it I don't do it but I think what really works is being consistent so yeah. even if it's 10 minutes if you just do 10 minutes every day if you think about it 10 minutes for 30 days of the month it's like it adds up yeah, instead of doing hours. one hour every now and then to re-motivate yourself is really hard so you know when you get kind of like off the wheel and you stop working out for a week you go on holiday getting back into it is really hard it right is. you're like yeah. oh I have in to get every back aspect into of mentally everything. yeah so then if you kind of work out really hard and then you stop it's really hard to keep restarting so by doing 10 minutes every day you don't have to think about that restart thing, you're just doing a little bit every day. Mm. And it'll add up, and that's when I think you really feel more in tune with your body, because every mm. day is different, and you feel different. So you might do something a little bit harder, you might do something longer, you might do something less intense. It all just depends on your day. So that's what I really wanted to focus on, is something for everyone. Yeah. Anytime, any sort of space you have, no equipment, whatever you have, you can do it. So that's kind of what I wanted to focus on, especially at home. You know, not everyone has equipment. Not everyone has, um, people have children. Like, not everyone has the time or the space or the effort. So that was what I wanted to focus on, was something that's super doable for everyone. Yeah, and I think that even the way that you show it, by the way, everything for her platform, like her Instagram, YouTube will be linked down below so you can check it out. But even the way that you lay out your video is very compact. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like you're showing this huge studio or yep. like these, this fancy workout aesthetic. Like it's all very it's relative really true, to who you're yeah. marketing it to. And it's really true to just using what you have. So yeah. I film it by my bed in, in my apartment. Oh my, God. my bed is like one millimeter aside from the camera and it's in the corner. So I use this corner in my bedroom to film and that's it and that's what I have and I made it work. Um, what I want, I mean I'm going to keep putting out two videos and everything a week, but what I just really want is to just make people feel good. That's yeah. my main thing because I've been through it all. I've been through personal trainers, I've been through every studio class yeah. you could possibly imagine. I've done it all. I believe that. And I always felt frustrated because the more I did, the worse I looked, the worse I felt because I was always tired, I was always hungry. So yeah. you got to find that balance where you feel good and you're working out but not pushing yourself so much that you're depleted. Yeah, I even felt like that years ago and I, I was also not making the best food choices mm -hmm. all the time but yeah, I really thought that I needed to be on the cardio machine for an hour. And I say this to girls now too, it's like you don't have to exhaust yourself you just have to be doing the right things for your body yeah and you have to be smart about yeah. it mm -hmm. you know so like if if high intensity workouts like i love to box works for you then great but you don't need to do it every day for two hours exactly. you know what i mean and also just because one person's doing something doesn't mean it's right for you right. i always say that there is no one size fits all no when it comes to your food when it comes to your exercise every body is different and i do think a lot of the female stuff is catered towards men right so yeah. a lot of the the studies you see about intermittent fasting and hit and all this stuff great for men but they don't have the complicated hormones like yeah. females do which really makes a difference so yeah another thing I really believe in is kind of syncing your workouts more to your cycle so when oh, it's like, mm -hmm, so we have four phases in our cycle from the menstrual bleed to like the one week afterwards one week afterwards one week afterwards so if you synchronize to how your hormones are, you're actually working to balance them instead of going against them. So Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait. 
give us like a little rundown of that or how so, we can it's if this is I've read basically every hormone book there is because I'm someone who has always suffered with hormonal imbalances terrible periods just a really bad oh. it's been a whole ongoing thing yeah. it still is I'm still working on it because I've been misdiagnosed I've had so many issues since I was 15 where oh. I have been on every birth control method you can imagine to kind of mask my pain um, and I got to the point where two years ago I decided to not be on anything because I was done with hormones they made me crazy made me feel terrible made me yeah. gain weight my skin everything was just it was like a cloud or a haze was always over me. So every time I would come off birth control, I was like, oh, wait, I feel alive. I forgot what this felt like. So what I'm doing right now, I've read every book. So the whole Sinking With Your Cycle is by Alyssa Vitti, which is one of the authors. I'll sh you can put the book up. Um, In the description box. <laughs> yeah, so she speaks a lot about how you should eat and exercise to kind of work with your cycle to help balance everything in your body instead of going against it. So when you do get your period, you're not supposed to be doing intense stuff. You're supposed to nurture and relax and eat carbs and like soothe your body and not be fighting against it. Right. So that'll help with inflammation, mood swings. It kind of, you got to work with your body, not against it. Yeah. That's what I mean, it's kind of, common sense, but I think... It's common sense, but it's hard. Yeah. So, but when you read it and you kind of think about it a little bit more, it's hard to execute completely and I'm still, again, doing it. Yeah. But it makes sense. That's why I um, just want everyone to feel good. That was my main thing, which I probably got off topic to what you No, no, was, it's I actually... Like, it's, mm. I get a lot of questions um, about what to do when you have your period when you're shooting, which, oh, you know... <laughs> Yeah, don't get me started. It's annoying. I feel lucky that I don't actually get my periods that bad. So I also have an IUD, but okay, fair enough. I am on nothing right now. My pains are so bad that I have to cancel work because I've been misdiagnosed basically my whole life. To recently going to see a bunch of doctors and they're all kind of telling me the same thing, but they can't legally diagnose you properly because they have to actually operate. So what they're telling me is I have PCOS and endometriosis. Okay. Which cannot be diagnosed without actually operating, going in, and removing if the tissue there. and seeing yeah. if it's there. There are no t other tests that they can do to tell you if you have it or not. But they can see by the signs and symptoms that you have it, but they can't tell you that. So the past couple of times I've been to a gynecologist where I've been in so much pain that I'm like, I have to go to the hospital because I'm like basically dying. I'm like, can I die from this? It's that painful. Oh my god. So, and I'm not exaggerating because it's going no, to the point where no, it's like no, no, ruining no. my life no. in a way. So when I have to shoot on my period, it sucks. Yeah. I'm dying. It's, it's not something and that the, you can exaggerate. It's, <laughs> it's not. And the inflammation that I get is so extreme that I could look like two different people. So pre-period, post-period, completely different person. Yeah. I am so swollen. I have like the worst bags. I'm so personality shut down. I'm just a completely different person. My God. And it sucks. So I'm trying to fix that. And I'm working with a doctor who I met here in New York through a friend um, who I actually just started working with when I got back. So I was like, I'm immediately going to see you. I saw him via Zoom and he's now working on a protocol for me because I want, I don't want to go on birth control and I'm more of a natural approach yeah. sort of girl. Yeah. So he's working on a protocol with me, which I'm just, you know, jotting down how I feel, seeing what works and maybe what doesn't work and we might switch things around. Um, but his name is Dr. Palvin. Okay. Um, he has been just so amazing because, long story short, I left the gynecologist two weeks ago because I was dying. Six days in bed with pain. Not just three, like six. So after my appointment with her, I felt so helpless and sad because I'm like, there is no cure. So I go in and she tells me I have this stuff, but there's no cure. But we can operate or we can give you birth control. And I was like, all of the above is not what I yeah, want. Yeah, it's not the solution. It's not. I want to get to the root cause of why this is happening. So I felt so sad. I left there crying, as I do every time I go and see a doctor, yeah. because they can't help me. And then I immediately emailed Dr. Palvin. And he's like, yeah, no problem. Like, we'll fix this. This is fixable. I was like, what? You're making me seem like I'm making a big deal out of something. Like, you're making it seem easy. He's like, I've dealt with this before. We can fix this. Wow. That's so the like, most relieving feeling ever. It was I can't such a relief. Imagine. I'm like, what do you mean? So now I'm working with him to see what I can do about this. And if this helps, this is going to be my new mission in life, is to like help women with That's my next pain. thing. Please film this. Please film this. I will, because 
it's something so many women suffer from yeah. and by the way there's no information out there it is insane that i'm googling researching what kind of diet plans work for endometriosis what reduces inflammation like there are ways you can heal your body through food which is medicine through movement yeah through acupuncture like there are ways so it's just really hard to find so you yeah. i go and ask people that i know who have it tell me what works what doesn't work and it's all trial and error from other people word of mouth and also for your own body i right. can imagine so yeah. it's it's just crazy how little information when it comes to like female hormones reproductive yeah. stuff it's it's crazy i've heard about pcos mm -hmm. endometriosis before mm -hmm. But um, there's this model, her name is Sandra. She has it, and I saw it on her Instagram. Okay. Um, that's how I actually realized the symptoms and the effects that it has on your body. So, like, when you say you get inflamed and you can't go to work, it's like, that's it's a not real funny. thing. It's a it's real not issue. Funny. It's a real thing. And the worst thing is, I've had times when I haven't canceled because I'm like, I can't cancel and say, I have to cancel, I have my period, right? Mm -hmm. But then I show up and work, and they don't book me again because I look terrible. I'm swollen, my stomach is distended, like, it's just the way it is, but I can't do anything about it. And yeah, to cancel but last in our minute, industry, it's like, it's like, you can't... And you can't show up and set and moan and be like, oh, I've got period cramps. <laughs> like, no. it doesn't work like that, so... No, no sympathy so there. So it sucks. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? I do think, so maybe something that could help, or that I really love, is infrared saunas help me a mm. lot. Helps reduce inflammation, relaxes the cortisol. I just feel so much better that deep sweat really works for me i know yeah. some people might like cryo or ice bath, no i love the sauna i like heat. i love it so for me yeah. i notice a big difference when i do that lymphatic drainage massages really help me massaging your stomach really helps me cbd oil but a high dosage i used to take too little i was like cbd does nothing for me then i right. really upped my dosage <laughs> and that really helps this is really good to know because i'm sure there's somebody watching right now who is going through this and is like i feel me. you <laughs> mm -hmm. it's nice see yeah um this is the whole goal with episodes like this for youtube is like i'm not gonna have this experience mm -hmm. but someone else mm -hmm. might so the right. more we talk about it the more real it comes the more relatable it is for you guys mm -hmm. so this is that's crazy yeah and so it's you honest, never know what any what people are dealing with you have no idea you might be like oh my god she looks really bad today what happened you know what none of your business <laughs> or like everyone is dealing with their own things so like stop judging and like yeah, it's tough. I'm like so mm. surprised, but also so like grateful that you brought that up. Mm -hmm. I've never spoken about this on my channel, but I get a lot of questions either. about it, and I can't, I, mm. I can't talk about it because I don't have these problems. I'm on a mission now that I've really fully been diagnosed. I feel like yeah, without because again they can't without operating, but now that it's more clear, because I'm always in denial about it. I'm always like. Oh, it'll be fine. The next one will be better. The next one will be, and then it's never better. Right. Two years so later, now you're I'm just still like, there. I'm really suffering, and then now it's at a point where it's ruining my life, and I'm like, I have to go back on birth control because I can't live like this. But I'm like, no, that's not a solution because that's not a long-term plan for me. Right. What about when I come off birth control? The same thing comes right back, and it might be worse. When you figure out what works. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You need to <laughs> go online and share your story because I, I think that's huge. Mm -hmm. One thing that I always ask everybody who comes on for mukbang mm -hmm. is um, if you were talking to a girl who is just starting her modeling career, I know we haven't really spoken that much about modeling in this video, which is totally fine. If you were to meet a girl who's just getting started yeah. and you had to give her one piece of advice, what would it be? So okay. annoying. I'm so annoying with this question. I know. but This is so hard. Definitely do your research when it comes to finding an agency. There are a lot of sketchy agencies, sketchy people on Instagram. Now that we have, like when I started modeling, there was no Instagram, nope. there was no Google Maps. I was oh walking God. around the city with my A to Z in London, felt like coloring in, putting notes, post-its, fashion week with 12 castings, and I had to like post it everything in advance. And when my agency would be like, oh, you, we have to change the location, you've got another casting. My whole day was ruined. <laughs> oh my God. Because it was all in this book from one station to the other. It was crazy. I had to spend like an hour the night before to plan my day. I didn't have Google Maps. Yeah, faxes. Um, yeah, it's crazy. So definitely do your research when it comes to agencies because I've heard that's a big thing of people yeah, having... Instagram scams? Instagram yeah. scams. So that's what I was trying to say. With Instagram, which I didn't have at the time, it was an agency. You Google them. Does the owner match? Like... Mm -hmm. um, now with Instagram, I know people get a lot of DMs from brands, emails, like just be really careful and do your research. It's easy right now, right? You can be like, is this guy working for 
elite is this guy yeah. working here so i think that is a big thing to just do your research don't do anything you don't want to do if someone is making you do something that doesn't make you comfortable you have to put your foot down right away yeah because people try and get away with stuff even if it's like i'm not just talking about things like shooting topless which is right. a huge thing right when i first started modeling the moment anything was sheer i was like oh no i'm not used to Me sheer too. clothes or anything like that when i was 16 oh i couldn't even think of right no um then you get used to it when you're doing shows and you're always just taking your clothes off and changing well, and now we're quick. at work and it's like you're just like whatever I'm whatever right. whatever gets the shots done quicker you're like yeah i'll change that side all right <laughs> yeah. but at first like i wasn't comfortable with that and i didn't know what to say because i don't know what it's like to be a model is this what they normally do but if it doesn't feel right don't do it it's hard that goes for everything for everything yeah even shooting over hours uh, i mean i would always totally then email my agents and say hey just so you know we're going over and then they would be like okay let me know when you finish but at the beginning i didn't because i didn't know so, or you're just too shy. For me, I've always, yeah. I was always too shy it's and like afraid that they wouldn't book me again. It, uh -huh. it is hard, but it is so important. And once you do it, you become more and more confident in that. And you're like, you know what? Yes, I'm here. Yes, they're paying me, but I'm, I'm also doing a job just like anybody else. Right. And I deserve overtime mm -hmm. or respect or whatever it is mm -hmm. that any other job gets to. Mm -hmm. So that's a really good point. So those would be my top two things, to be honest. And just take care of yourself. This job is not the end of the world. I've had so many times where I've like, cancel the holiday for an option. Cancel things that I want to do because my agent told me I have to come in for this. It's mm -hmm. like, it's hard to say no and it's hard to put your foot down because you feel like you're working for someone or you feel like, you know, your career is in their hands. Right. But it is also not the end of the world. So you right. want to take a holiday, take that holiday and book out. Right. That's very important. I'm actually learning that now. <laughs> it is still hard. It is hard because I'm right now on hold for a job on Wednesday, but I actually have stuff that I'm doing here and I'm like, okay, so I guess if it confirms I'm going to have to fly tomorrow, so I'm going to have to like cancel my hotel and I have other things going on. I'm like, you know what? This client should have just told me last week mm -hmm. to like tell me so last minute is annoying. But then again, you can't say no because you're like, wow, I need this client. I need to make that money. I know. It's, it, it is kind of like a situation mm -hmm. based thing, but you're right. Like. I think a lot of us, especially when we're young, you feel like you need to be around all the time. You feel like you need to always be there, always be ready to yep. go. And it's like, yes and no. Yeah. You need to set your boundaries. boundaries. Everybody needs a break. You uh -huh. don't always need to be on or available or mm -hmm. whatever. So yeah, stand up for yourself and, and, yeah. and also just say like, hey, I've been here all year. I'm going to take this two week holiday mm -hmm. with my family or my boyfriend or mm -hmm. whatever. Very important. Yeah. Boundaries boundaries in every area of life <laughs> thank you so much for being in my video thank you for and having for me giving so much amazing tips and advice and there will be more yeah yeah for sure <laughs> okay guys don't forget to check out the description box um go check out tasha on instagram youtube go do her workouts i'm gonna be doing her workouts especially now that do it's the standing cold again. One. i'm gonna do the standing one in my apartment <laughs> don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it subscribe if you're new and i'll see you